Hello, everyone. It's an absolute honor to join you again this year at Girls in Tech. Thanks so much for having me. I'm here to share five simple rules for finding your fearless and thriving at every stage of your career. Now, when I say these rules are simple, it's not the same as saying they're easy. Women have had to smash through glass ceilings in every industry, and the tech sector is tougher than most. These rules come from 20 years of real-world experience. They're lessons I've learned at a time when guideposts for women in tech average somewhere between zip zero, and you've got to be kidding me. Full disclosure, it hasn't been a cakewalk, and it won't be for you either. But success is 100% achievable if you follow the rules I'm about to share with you, starting in your roaring 20s. Yep, that's me in my early 20s, circa 1990-something. Nice perm there, Laura. It's true. I started my career in the era of butterfly clips, Britney Spears, and friends. What I can say for sure is that your 20s are seriously exciting. You're graduating from college, starting your career, and a world of opportunities is opening up for you. If you're in your 20s today, you're also starting out with an advantage earlier generations could only dream of. Women now represent 60% of university graduates worldwide. You've grown up with girl power messaging in pop culture and a corporate world that's waking up to the advantages of a more equitable workforce. According to McKinsey, companies with a gender-inclusive leadership team are 21% more likely to outperform their category peers in profitability. It's not about hiring women just for the sake of it. It's about choosing the best candidate for the job, regardless of race or gender. Yet, women still account for just 25% of all tech jobs and only 24% of senior leadership positions. Silicon Valley's pervasive grow culture is certainly a factor. According to Accenture, 40% of women who leave the industry cite it as a major reason. Which brings me to rule number one. If you're going to win big in this industry, you had better build your bold. Personally, I graduated with honors in psychology, and my goal was to become a psychiatrist. But before I committed more time, money, and effort to academics, I wanted to experience the real world to make sure I was on the right path. So what do you do with a degree in psychology? You work for an insurance company, of course. Meet junior claims adjuster, Laura. Yikes. In truth, I graduated into a non-existent job market, and this was the first position anyone offered me. It allowed me to travel and develop new skills while helping people in a moment of need. But I came to realize that it wasn't the right career trajectory for me. Neither was psychiatry. Instead, at the ripe old age of 27, I decided to go back to school to earn my MBA full time. I believe the clinical term for the uncertainty I felt at that moment is scared shitless. This was going to cost me a lot of time, money, and effort. But here's the thing about your bold. It isn't something you rummage around your brain hoping to find. It's a muscle. You have to exercise regularly so it grows stronger. So as petrifying as the decision was at the time, I'm so glad I made it, not just for everything I learned in the MBA program, but also for everything I experienced inside and outside the classroom. I joined team sports with my classmates. I organized local charity events. And when I was 29, I toured Europe with my classmates as the oldest member of the group. Along the way, I was able to build a solid foundation for both a career and a fulfilling personal life. To those of you in this age group today, I say this. The 20s aren't just about school or working your ass off as low gal on the totem pole. They're also about traveling with friends, time with family, and filling your life with people and experiences that will make you a smarter, more well-rounded person who's ready for the battles ahead. Enter simple rule number two, fight like a girl. Because once you've decided on a path, that's when the real battle begins, especially in a male-dominated industry like technology. Studies cited by The Atlantic show that women in tech 
are interrupted in meetings more often than men. They're also evaluated on their personality in a way that men are not. Is she approachable, friendly, or bitchy? Even worse, women's contributions to open source software are accepted more often than men, but that's only if their gender is unknown. To be clear, most sexism isn't overt. Most of the time, it's unconscious gender bias on the part of good men being clueless rather than malicious. In my experience, the vast majority of men in tech are considerate and supportive. My longtime mentor, he's a man. The truth is everybody has to slog through a massive amount of crud when they're first starting out. But I realized early on that women have to work twice as hard to attract the same level of recognition men do. Is that fair? Of course not. But in my book, it's also moot. Successful women are those who fight to do their best all the time, period. Instead of getting worked up over it, my mantra became prepare, 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 and then prepare some more. Even for the smallest of meetings, I made sure I was dialed in and ready for action. Make no mistake, there is no such thing as an overnight success. It can take years. But I promise you this, even in your weakest moments, when it doesn't seem like all that hard work will ever pay off, just know that it will. And your success will be all the more sweet for the struggle. How can I be so sure? Because when you prepare for every meeting ahead of time, when you eagerly accept and then crush every project thrown your way, you're also building your confidence. A little win here, another there, and pretty soon, you're achieving a solid track record of accomplishment. Just as importantly, you're forging relationships. You're piecing together a network of people who know they can count on you and will be there when you need it too. In other words, you're not just making LinkedIn connections, you're building your tribe. Once you recognize that your fight is gaining traction, you start to realize that success is truly possible for anyone, even me. So work hard and fight to establish your bona fides. You're tougher than you think. And while you're out there fighting the good fight, foster substantive, mutually beneficial relationships on the job and off. Do that and you'll have the perfect launching pad for thriving in your 30s. The backdrop for my 30s included Green Day, the iPod, and a little movie called Legally Blonde. If you've never seen it, it's a quirky rom-com starring Reese Witherspoon as Elle a superficial sorority girl who decides to go to law school. Once she's there, she and everyone else discover there's a whole lot more to Elle than just her pinkalicious fashion sense. It's a fun movie, but it also offers an important lesson that's captured in simple rule number three. Never let them judge your book by its cover. This particular rule is near and dear to me because this is a decade of huge opportunities and more than a few trap doors. You're in your 30s, you're hitting your stride, and you're finally getting the compensation and advancement that go with it. For me, that meant joining Guidewire, an outstanding company that develops solutions for the insurance industry. As one of its early employees, I was able to play a vital role in helping the company go from tiny startup to post-IPO success story. But in the early days, Customers and prospects would see this young blonde walk into a meeting and assume I was somebody's assistant. And let me tell you something, I wasn't about to let anybody judge me unfairly just because my book came with an ever so stylish feminine cover. To take my career to the next level, I knew I would need to gain the kind of expertise that commands respect. So I continued to pursue and accept every project I could further expanding my network. I also sought out every single piece of feedback I could gather, the good, the bad, and the WTF. I'd literally print out the feedback and find ways to incorporate improvements until they became habits. And it worked. My career progression started accelerating in leaps and bounds. But your 30s does come with some minefields. Generally speaking, companies start assigning larger roles to up-and-comers between the ages of 30 and 35. This is the point when men go into 24 by seven work mode, ditto for many women. 
But after notching up successes, some of us begin to realize that career alone may not be enough to fulfill us anymore. After putting it off for so long, some realize they're finally ready for a little bundle of joy to call their own. This is Claire, the greatest decision I ever made. The good news, if you've been laying the right foundation, having a baby doesn't mean your career has to grind to a halt. Remember how I said I eagerly sought and accepted every project I could? When we do that, we begin to become part of the DNA of our organizations. We become indispensable. And when that happens, companies, at least the smart ones, will give you the flexibility you need to balance work and family life. If they don't, find one that will. Because here's the thing, living a successful, rewarding life is about more than just business. And trust me, you may not prize working late, but you'll always cherish every last children's book you read before tucking your little ones into bed. In your 30s, your network, your tribe becomes a formidable asset in helping to make that happen. But fair warning, the strength of your network doesn't just stem from the people you bring into it, it's also about the people you weed out. Which brings me to simple rule number four, neutralize negative people. Let's face it, the workplace is riddled with mega basic Bs, both men and women. I mean, being berated by a malevolent boss can be a living nightmare, but so is nailing a presentation only to hear a supposed ally make a point of saying, well, that didn't go well, did it? All the while you have your guard down, they'll continue undermining you, feigning innocence when confronted and making you look like the weird one for getting so angry. To defeat them, you have to understand their motivation. According to psychologists, your locus of control can be internal, meaning you believe you have control over your life, or it can be external, meaning you believe you're helpless against outside forces that control your fate. According to Forbes, people who lack confidence in their ability to achieve their goals become more jealous and competitive towards anyone they see as a threat. Your perspective changes when you realize that they're operating out of weakness, not strength. If you go home and fume over their outrageous behavior, they win a battle. If you refuse to breathe in their toxic negativity, you win the war. The very best way to neutralize negative people, focus on your work. As you continue to expand your sphere of influence, the negative Nallies will see their attacks inflict less and less damage. Eventually, they'll just give up. As for the minefields you need to avoid in your early 30s, I wish someone had told me this too. It gets better. Keep working hard and you'll pave your way to your fabulous 40s when you can go full throttle once more. At this point in life, you know who you are. You know your strengths, your blind spots. But that doesn't mean you'll stop learning, which leads me to my fifth and final rule, focus on what matters most. In my 40s, I learned quite a few new things. I've learned that it's okay to stop comparing yourself to others. You're pretty darn great just the way you are. When you see a coordinated outfit you like online, just buy it. Don't even think about trying to recreate it yourself. Better yet, choose a uniform that looks good on you and stick with it. Just ask Pantsuit Lady. Also, it's okay if you don't like jazz. Believe me, I tried people, I really tried. If Maroon 5 or BTS is more your jam, go with it. Use all your vacation days. It makes you a better person. Most important of all, decide on the things that really matter to you and laser focus on them. Looking back now, it's clear that reaching the upper ranks of tectum took finding my fearless, the tenacity to fight for what I wanted, and the emotional intelligence to be a force for good in the lives of those around me. And you know what? There's a word for this. It's called leadership. There's one thing I learned in my 40s that reinforces this focus on what matters most. This is my mom. Yes, that's me and my siblings when I was 39. Mom was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. She died within six weeks on my 40th birthday, in fact. Some of the best memories of my life are from those six weeks with my family at mom's bedside. We made every 
every king moment count. We let go of old animosities and the petty things that never really mattered anyway. And we made wonderful memories that will stay with us for the rest of our lives. Ladies, whatever path you choose, whatever dream you fight for, remember that we are here together on this earth for a vanishingly short amount of time. Don't let your life be full of woulda, coulda, shouldas. Be bold, fight for your dream, live a life that's full and rewarding. Most important of all, be generous in helping others in their own journey. Let your words and actions foster good on the job, in your personal life, and in this world. Your success becomes you. Who you are, what you stand for. Make it matter for yourself and for everyone you love. Thank you. That's a wrap.